Hi, so just a quick video to introduce to you uh, Bauma's latest background suppression sensor, the OT300GL here. So this is a time of flight uh, technology sensor, which provides background suppression from 100 mil all the way up to 1.8 meters in such a miniaturized size. So it keeps to the same form and factor as the O300 series that Bauma has for all the different uh, photocell technologies in terms of background suppression, through beam, um, retroreflective, etc. etc. So the same body size here in that half inch size. You've got your LEDs on the uh, on the top here for on and off and also operating. Same mounting holes and size and everything in such a small body size here. So like I said, it works this version on the time of flight principle so you've got a nice small beam spot here that it produces and it can detect uh, targets up to 1.8 meters away uh, because of the time of flight principle it has on board with it uh, io link so lots of uh, features available and easy parameterization available on it um, standard m84 pin connection on there and with IOLink, I'm going to connect it to our USB-C master here to my laptop. And I'll go through all the features that you can have in terms of parameterizing and also the condition monitoring information you can get out of the sensor. Um, so a really simple sensor to use. It has QTeach on it, so you don't need to use IOLink or need to go through the set software to set it up. You can simply touch to teach. Uh, on the target that you want, anywhere from 100 mil to 1.8 meters away from the sensor. Okay, so now that we have physically connected our sensor to our USB-C master and to our laptop, let's find and connect the device. This may take a couple of seconds as it says, and there we are. So that's my laptop here. This is the USB-C master connected here and that is the sensor, the OT300 sensor connected. So just double click into the sensor and that allows us to now go into the very powerful and super simple way of setting up this device. So via the IODD file, we get all the information that we would expect uh, with regards to the name of the device, the product ID, you know, all the headings that you would expect um, and also the wiring, etc., and the full part number there and you can get the operating manuals etc etc from these links here okay so if i go into our radio button here into the settings of the sensor we can now see what the sensor is seeing so the sensor here is mounted around a meter away from the edge of my uh tabletop here so from sensor to tabletop is around a meter so it's saying 1.05 uh, millimeters, uh, sorry, 1055 uh, millimeters. Uh, when you switch the sensor, the LED will turn on there. Okay, so you can see very simply, I can see exactly what the target, uh, what target and how far away uh, the sensor can see. So within the um, free software, with the Bauma Sensor Suite, we can choose a selection of what is interesting to us and able to set the settings of, of the sensor to how we want it to work. So we can display the distance that it can see, we can display the quality value, so how light or dark is the target that we're looking at. So it's looking at, <clears throat> currently looking at the tablecloth here at an angle down, and it's giving us a reflective light value or quality value of around 300% if I put something say quite bright and shiny in there you can see that the quality value jumps up to be really high so this gives us an indication on how well it can see a target now that I've put that wooden block in you can see the beam spot there is still quite small at almost a meter away uh, to be able to see what we wanted to see and the distance here is in the top right hand corner so there's different signal processing profiles depending on your target 
to be able to get your sensor to work exactly how you want it. So the, st the standard profile that it gets shipped with, or a faster profile, or a long range profile. Depending on the target, we might want to do a bit of playing around with these. Also, we're able to change the custom settings of the, set of the sensor for the maximum perturbation time, the smoothing factor, and we can edit these to how we wish if we want to. So, hey, this sort of, sort of thing we can do, no worries, just by typing in and sending it to the sensor by pressing enter. Uh, we can display the condition information uh, data, which is always on display here in the, in the software uh, of what is the device status. It's okay in this case, the quality value. So now that I change that one block, it's up to 3000%. The times the sensor has been booted, um, seven times here. So it's a fairly new sensor. Um, the device temperature here is displayed in Celsius. I can change that to Fahrenheit or Kelvin if I wish, and you can see the value changes here. Celsius is easier for me to understand, so I'll leave it as that. And then we can see or uh, indicate what the power supply voltage is to the sensor itself. So 20 volts is being supplied to the sensor at the moment. Okay, so let's go into the settings of the sensor itself. So that was more about how do we get the data to the sensor, but now, how do we actually set up the sensor? So we click on the parameterization and go to the, here we go, the uh, switching channels, uh, signal channels a tab. And we can set the sensor up to switch at certain points, uh, whether it be a single point, whether it be in a window, or whether it be two point. Um, so if I just wanted to set up a single point, Detection, if I put my block here in the beam and say, right, that's where I want to see it. There and, and between that and the sensor and this position here, I'd like to see it. I can just press set there and it tells me that it's setting the switching point 5% off the offset at 719 mil. And you can see here my output is on and you can see where it is in relation to the distance and the switch point. So I can change the switch point here as well, if I wish, uh, to drag it to the distance that I want from the time information that I see. But if I just do a quickly, again, a teacher that point, I can now see the switching channel here turn on. And as soon as I move it away, over that 719, you can see the value in the top right hand corner has gone to almost 800 mil and the switching channel output is gone off. If I now bring it back in again, within that distance, that is that on and off. Okay, so <clears throat> if I now want to do it into a window, I can say, right, turn on between 700 mil, um, sorry, and let's say 550 mil. Yeah, something like that. And you can see both my lines appear here on the graph. And I can change it to a view that's more suitable to me if I wish, like so. And I can say, right, we're in, we're in between that band of 700 and 500 mil and the output has come on here either side of that. So if I go further away, the output goes on, off, sorry. And if I bring it closer, the output goes off. And you can see the LED also responding in the same way. So off there, because we're too close, we go into that band, the output comes on and off when we're past that 700 mil mark sorry because the beam spot went to the background there instead if i keep it on there there we go off on and off again there we go so that's how window word work uh window mode works sorry we can do this in a static two point teach as well or we can do it with a dynamic uh teach here 
on the sensor where we start the dynamic uh, teaching process and then stop it once we've moved the, sense, uh, the part in front of the sensor. Uh, the counter here also sees the switches that we've done. We can reset that if we wish, if we've got an output based on the number of switching, uh, switching operations taking place. So if I change it back to single point and say <clears throat> 750 mil or something like that, uh, and we say even if we wanted to change the, the offset to a couple of percent, say, right, teach that position there, 766 mil or something like that. Uh, you can see output comes on and off as we get into that beam spot there or that position there. And I can do this with dark targets. So I've got a dark target in there. On, off, on, off, and I can deal with really obtuse angles if I keep it in the in the sight. So if I twist that around, keep it onto the beam spot there. So I can deal with fairly good angle changes on dark targets. That's really quite a shallow angle. You can see it loses the signal there. As soon as I turn it back in again, we can still see it quite well. So this works on that time of flight principle. Again, if I do it with a brighter target, I can get to an even bigger angle, really, and still the output is quite reliable and works quite well. So the only ones to be really careful with is really dark targets like I just showed you here. But on bright targets you've got a bigger angle you can play with on side to side, on even surfaces and things like that. If I now put in something cylindrical you can see no real issue there of seeing the distance, even over to the edges of the target. So the beam spot is now hitting here, and still I'm getting a good and stable signal back if I choose move it to the other side of the cylindrical target. You can see I'm just bouncing off the side there, but there it is. And you can still see that I get a good number and the switching works fine. There we go. Even like fabric type targets like so, you can see we get a good signal even at some funny angles. Dark targets of course when you're using light-based technology, even if it is time of flight, needs to have a good reflectivity or a decent enough reflectivity. So dark targets will give a issue, but even at this sort of angle here, there we go, that's when we lose it, but we can see it very well here. That's when we lose it almost, almost 90 degrees to the uh, light source there. As soon as I move it back in again, you can see what can, can read it. So very good properties with that there. Okay, so just to go over some of the final features really, you can have the hysteresis left aligned, center aligned or right aligned. You can invert the outputs or keep it as normal, you can see the output turns on then when it's there and off the other way around. You can add timers in, so response delays, anything up to uh, 10 seconds here. Um, so you can put in 30 second uh, delay on it, uh, 
response delay or keep the output on for a certain period of time like a pulse say for 50 milliseconds um, and you can do uh, both pulses for pulse duration or just the positive pulse or just the negative pulse all those sorts of things you can do with the uh, sensor here uh, obviously it's got a counter in built in there and you can reset that like I just did there finally inputs and outputs you can uh, change the output that we're using over SC1 uh, in this state uh, here at this moment to put a source to either a push pull a PMP or an MPN output you can choose um, if you want to use the other uh, switching uh, states as the output you can choose the selection here and then assign what you want the circuit to be push pull PMP or MPN of course you can save the settings to your laptop or save them to the sensor um, which it does automatically <coughs> via IOLink so you can upload or download settings from your laptop or do a factory reset here at this point here um, you can also through, through the software see the condition monitoring information and reset any of just the sticks if you wish but really uh, just to show um, how easy it is to set up a simple background suppression sensor with graphical information and I'm able to see what's happening over time with the sensor so you can see there okay so just to summarize Baumer's OT300 GL here the time of flight uh, background suppression sensor excellent uh, price performance uh, on it so a small size photo cell here that's able to give us background suppression detection up to 1.8 meters away from the sensor a simple uh, parameterization either via touch to teach at the back here via our QTeach process or via IR link um, so a great sensor that works on Pretty much any target whether it be dark or shiny and can deal with lots of uneven surfaces and dark targets and things like that so a great uh, part detection uh, sensor nice and simple nice and cost effective in this miniaturized size